You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome to Art Talks. This is a show where I interview creative types. We have artists, sometimes we have poets, and sometimes we've had musicians here on this show. I'm Joanne Bauer, your host for Art Talks, and today I'm really thrilled to have friends and colleagues with me, two poets who are part of the Faxon Poetry Group that meets locally here in West Hartford at the Faxon Library. And I want to get some information about Faxon right out to you right from the beginning. The Faxon Poetry Group was started in 2002, and we're going to talk a little bit more about its history. This is a group that meets monthly every third Saturday of the month at the Faxon Branch Library here in West Hartford. That's part of the library system. And the uh, Faxon Library is located at 1073 New Britain Avenue. It's very, very convenient. And in fact, I think what I want to do is say the phone number also, if I can find it quickly or not, because I want, we want the audience to know about the 10th anniversary of Faxon Poets and Faxon Poets publication. In fact, here on the table, we've brought along the um, anthologies that have been happening over 10 years time. And so we're very, very proud of the 10th anniversary. And the, um, the booklet this year, in fact, shows on the cover an excellent photo of the branch library the way it looked last spring. We see the blossoming tree. So 10th anniversary issue, and there will be a publication party that is free and open to the public. We, we absolutely invite the public to join us. And the date of that publication party and reception will be April, because April is Poetry Month. It will be Sunday, April 24th. Beginning at 1 o'clock, folks should come on over. There's always food and a lovely, lovely reception. And poets from the Facts and Poetry group will be reading their poems, including my guests, Pamela Guinan and David Mello. And I will be there also. So again, just to stretch, stress that date, this is the Faxon Poetry Group of West Hartford. It's their 10th anniversary of their publication anthology, which happens once a year. And we will celebrate that in April, Poetry Month, the 24th, over at, at the library itself. Again, 1073 New Britain Avenue. So today, what I want to do is give my guests opportunities to talk a bit about what are the benefits of being in a, a writer's group, a poetry group. How do we benefit? How do we relate to one another? We're going to chat informally, and my guests are also going to read poems. So I'm very, very happy about that. They're going to re read from their original poems. So starting with you, Pamela Guinan. I want you to maybe tell us a little bit about when you joined Faxon, or approximately, and, and what do you see as the benefits of being there? Well, I joined Faxon a Poetry uh, Group in about five or six years ago, and I feel that two of the best benefits for uh, any, any poet or writer um, in joining a group, because uh, writing is a solitary endeavor, um, mm -hmm. I believe Number one, socialization. You know, once a month we get to go out, um, mix and mingle uh, with other people who are, have a love of poetry as we do. Um, and then we share our work. We get uh, The second benefit is that we get a chance to um, improve, hone our craft. Um, and that's uh, done by receiving um, commentary from the other members in the group. Um, so those are the two biggest benefits that, that I can... Mm -hmm. What sure. about you, Dave? Would you add any, anything different to add to that? Uh, maybe, maybe one thing, but uh, I've been a member since January of 2010, uh, and it's a great place uh, where 
people from the same uh, artistic background can get together and uh, schmooze and rub elbows together <laughs> right. and, share, and share their work. And as Pamela said, you get critique because it's not just a, 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 an opportunity to read your, your work, you get critique uh, back from the other poets, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, you do whatever you want to do with that information. Yeah. But that's very helpful. And yeah. it's, it's just a marvelous uh, uh, means to socialize with people from yeah. that particular background. And the Faxon group is very eclectic, so you get a wide variety of people <laughs> who, and their subject matter is like A to Z, you know. It, it's, 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 it's really neat, a neat opportunity. That's a great point, Dave. It really is an eclectic group in my experience. And I've been with Fax and I would say about six years too, same as uh, both of you. And when I first started, there would maybe be 12 people around the table, I'm thinking on average, every month. And now we have many new faces, probably 20 people average around the table, or which more makes for some challenges in terms of yeah, timing right, and making yeah. sure that everybody who wants to read can can read their newest work and get the feedback and get the critique that they're looking for. But f in my experience, it's one of the most affable groups I've ever been in. And we have humor humorists within the group. Um, I'm going to just, I actually, I'm going to put, put a plug in here for Andy Wheel because he's appeared on my show on, on our yeah. talks. Um, he's a West Hartford poet and performance artist who has been here and has read. And he's one of the people, I certainly don't think he's the only funny person in the group, but he's one of the people who sets a tone of humor and inviting, you know, an inviting nature. In addition, we should mention Marsha Lewis, who's been the, uh, the librarian who actually started Faxon Poetry, Poetry Group in the fall of 2002. Um, you want to say anything uh, about Marsha and what well, she's... Marsha's been a mentor. You know, I've, I've known her as long as I've, I've been a member there. She's a lovely lady and she has, a, you know, a good interest in it. And I think uh, the, she just retired, and I think we're going to miss her dearly. I, you know, I hope the replacement is as good as her or close to it. And uh, Masha has, a, you know, a lot of spirit and soul, and she's really the driving force behind the group. And I think that w we're going to miss her tremendously, and uh, I think she's just a total uh, positive influence on the group. Absolutely, she is. And, in fact, <clears throat> as we're thinking about... Marsha, who, who has retired already, but definitely will be there in April. In, in our anthology, each year, in addition to having her own, she is a poet, so she'll have her own work, but she also creates a composite poem from the group's poetry of the year before. And so she takes one line from each person's poem and she puts it into an amazing composite piece. And uh, I'm not going to, in fact, I, not even, here it is, Perspectives. This was the Perspectives 9 the year before, uh, the composite poem. And there are lines from at least 18, <laughs> 18 lines, 18 of us poets. Um, so that's a really clever thing that she does, and it's worth getting the publication yeah. just to see it. And we also want to mention that Cricket Press has been our partner. Cricket Press is a West Hartford, West Hartford enterprise, and they're the ones who make the publication happen. In addition to Steve Olechna, who is our anthology guru. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any, either of you want to say anything more about Steve and Steve and June. Steve is the editor, and June Mendelkorn is our co-editor. Steve's been editing the, um, the chapbook for, I believe, all 10 of its years. I think that's correct. Um, and he puts an awful lot of his you know, personal time into doing it, and then probably over a period of four, four months from start to finish with the, um, the manual. So. Yes, and he does it so smoothly. He never creates grief for no, any no, of no, us. No, there's there's never any snags. <laughs> you know, he's very smooth, as you said, Joanne, and uh, he does put a good effort into this as Pamela said, and it is, it is a lot of work, and you gotta, cause you gotta do a lot of follow-up. You know, there's a lot of follow-up and feedback, and he sends out two or three, maybe even four uh, 
versions of it before it's final. Right. And then June, as you mentioned, she edits it to make sure that everything is, you know, the spelling and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, Steve is, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work and he does all the bookkeeping. So I'm, right. I'm glad he has it's that a, job. It's just amazing. And he's, he's so unassuming about getting it done yeah. and never creating any drama for any of us. So we really appreciate that. And I do want to say one other thing because I'm, proud of this particular cover, which was my artwork on our perspectives um, number six. We have artwork from the um, from various members of, of the group. So folks submit their art if they happen to be photographers, or in this case, it was a graphic artist who also lives in West Hartford. And that's another piece of what you get when you buy the anthology. Anything else that we want to say about the group, per se? Anything else that pops into your mind? I just want to mention something about the composite poem. I always look forward to that because uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to do that, and it's very talented. Uh, that Ma Ma Masha has a lot of talent to be able to put that together. But when you read it, uh, I, I always find it a lot of fun to find your own line. <laughs> right. When you find your own line. Right. Wow, that's, that's, oh, she took that line from that poem and she fit, fitted it in there. I always find that I uh, get a few chuckles out of that. I enjoy that. That's right. And it's a, it's a form of found poetry. We, we think of um, um, found poetry meaning that lines that are found are taken by the poet, the author, and made to work somehow together. And so that's, that's one thing that she does. I want to just quickly say that I had so much fun at an event just two weeks ago at Barnes and Noble where they were doing this thing called book spine poetry, another type of found poetry where you come in there, you grab books off of their mm. shelves at Barnes and Noble and you stack them so that, actually stack from top to bottom, so that these are lines of poetry. And that seems to be a thing that's, that's going on. The woman who was there, um, the, the, the employee, Jessica, said, this is all going to be on Instagram. Are you on Instagram? And I said, no, I'm not. But she was, you know, she was posting everything as we were running up with these, with these poets. It was so, with these poems, and it was really so much fun. So do you use the title of the book? As the yes, you use the, the title. You use the title of the book. So there'll be one title, then the next one, then the next one, and maybe Sounds six fun. lines. It yeah, was so yeah. cool. So uh, speaking of poems now, I do want to turn to each of you, and we'll take turns probably. And Pamela, let's, let's start with you. I know that you brought us some poems today that, have, that show us different types of poetic voice, voices in a way. We have narrative voice. We can have a humorous tone or humorous voice to our poetry. We can have fantasy. And I know that you've worked with within the, those ranges. So why don't we start out with one of your poems? All right. Uh, the first one um, that addresses voice is pretty common. It's the voice of any man. Um, any person, right? Yeah, any person. Either gender. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, so I'll read the title and then go on with the poem. Um, Though ten feet are better is the name of the poem. Though ten feet are better, I like these seven-foot ceilings dropped low above my head, better than the six feet below above the dead. <laughs> now, that it could be written, you know, by any person of, uh, let's say, adult age anyway. Um, then I, my next one is, uh, it's in the voice of a child, okay, which you'll see through the, the wording. Um, this one is, Happy Birthday, Joey. Happy birthday, Joey. My mommy grew a watermelon set close upon her chest. Daddy said he wanted seedless and watered it in jest. When the growing time was over, they opened up the rind. There lay my little brother. No melon could they find. <laughs> These past few years with Joey put my thinking to the test. If something's supposed to come with seeds, don't ask for anything less. <laughs> So that's in the, in the mindset of a, of a child. 
um, then, you know, you can go on and you can put in the mindset of a person of, you know, the same sex as yourself or the opposite sex of yourself. Um, there are persona poems that are um, in, the, in the person of um, someone or something else, okay, like a persona poem, one that I'll, I'll read parts of later, is um, it's in the voice of the building. And this one happens to be in the voice of the municipal building in downtown Hartford, downtown Hartford. Um, which had a 100th year anniversary. The city hall. Uh, yeah, the of, city hall, exactly. Wonderful. So that, that actually leads me to just make this comment. Oftentimes, in, within our group, we presume, we assume that people are reading in their own voice, in their, in their, in their each, each in their own voice. I often do. In fact, all, most of my poems are, are autobiographical. Okay. But that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have, the last couple of years, we've had this party, this holiday party, at which we challenge one another to read in the voice of a different member of our group, a different poet member of our group. And then we have a contest and see who can guess what voice this right. is in. And so certainly, Pamela, you showed us that we can write in the voice of a child. We can write in the voice of every man or every person. We can write um, as, as a building, which we'll come back to in a moment. Dave, I would like to hear from you now. So look at you. You've got, you've got your glasses and I your... Need well, in your, I'm lost. your uh, binder here. Well, I I brought a few poems. I got Good. a few poems here. My type of poetry, my style is uh, storytelling. I I'm a storyteller. Definitely, you are. So I'm going to read this this particular poem. It's called Autumn Chill. In amber woods on gray fall days, I take my walk in morning haze. The mist will lift before too long. On yonder path, I'll stroll along. With passing thoughts, I make my way. There are many deeds to do this day. What beauty here these woods unfold, so crisp the air, so fresh and bold. Dappled sunlight shining through. The sky now clears in vibrant blue. The woods turn quiet and very still, surrounding me in autumn chill. Lovely. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. And do you know, Dave, I just want to comment that you oftentimes, though not always, you oftentimes write in rhyme, yes. which, which is not necessarily required anymore. Right. Of course, we know that poetry has had a long history, and rhyming goes in and out of vogue, and so now some of, some of what we do is free verse or blank verse, but right. certainly rhyming is part of the poetic scene. And I, I, for one, appreciate your rhymes. Well, thank you. It's interesting you mention that because uh, I always assumed, uh, at least when I was younger, uh, poetry was nothing but rhyme. But I do uh, use rhyme in some of my poems. In a lot of them, I have no rhyme at all, and, and there's quite a few that I mix it up. But I, 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 I do more with free verse, but the, the rhyming has to come natural in order for me to, for me to use it. Right. You don't forced, want it to be stifled uh, or I, I stiff sounding. It, but. Right. So we do, uh, of course, with poetry, and we, we're not here necessarily to do so much educating as to right. enjoy some of the poems, but we do look for rhythm and we look for alliteration and certain elements of, of, of what constitutes poetry. What about your next poem, Dave? Okay. Is this, this going to be rhyming or not? No, or? This poem uh, has next to nothing in rhyme. Uh, it's the latest poem I wrote. It's a little more on the heavy side. My subject matter varies from A to Z. Some are sad, some are happy. Not too many of them are funny. I don't have too many humorous poems, but you have some very yes, humorous well, poems. Well, there, 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 there's a couple. There, there's a couple. Maybe, there's a couple. There's a couple that are humorous, but not 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 many. <laughs> those those two in particular happen to be a, a little a little over the edge. But uh, I'm going to read this poem called. This is a, the newest poem I've written. It's called Over Again. Memphis saw me wasted with a ticket for New Orleans to play my horn again. Passed out in the station, toked out on the weed, waiting for the hound. For a time I had it all. I walked in high cotton. But that's all over now. There are no more victories. There are no more songs. I have won and I have lost. But I always came to play. I never ran the clock out. I played it to the end. Mostly, I'm confused. 
I do not understand. What I had is gone. It is time to reassess. I need someone to hold, perhaps to settle down. My emotions run away. I just hear the thunder and feel the rain. The rainbow vanished from the sky. I am out of love and left behind. Alone at the end of the day, the lights are all turned off and the seats are all empty. I come back on stage to look at the arena and play it over again. So speaking of voice, that's a really great example of a place where you're not taking your own voice, I'm assuming, right? That's right. not the story of your life. So you were reading in the voice of, of whom, would of, you say? Of, this, of a musician. Of a musician. The who's horn player. Down at, the Jazz horn player who's right, right. down and out on his luck, but had right. a career. Exactly, that, exactly. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I think that was a great example, too, of showing us that poetry <clears throat> can certainly move to, toward the different emotions. From We have humor, and we have sadness, and we have longing, and all. all. I'm thinking of, of our poetry group. We have, uh, we have rap. We have lots mm -hmm. of different right. elements, as you said. Pamela, coming back to you, I know that you mentioned you have one particular poem that you want to read, and then maybe we'll get to an ekphrasis okay. poem, ekphrasis meaning a poem written in response to an art piece. And then, Dave, maybe you can round us out with sure. another one or two. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, this poem is called The Municipal Building, and it celebrates the uh, 100th year anniversary of the um, Hartford Town Hall. Uh, it's in the voice of the building. Cool. And it involves a little fantasy. Um, well, I would imagine, right? Because you are not the building. <laughs> Beyond and, that fantasy. And you're not 100. <laughs> oh, and, and even more fantasy. Even okay, more great. Fantasy, right? Even deeper <laughs> fantasy. Um, so the beginning of the poem is, uh, again, the voice of the building, and um, the, building, the building speaks, uh, conceived in the heart-warmed hands of men long gone, verily I carry on. And then it goes on, and uh, then it gets to a little fantasy. Um, the building's spoken about what happens during the day, and now he's musing on it. So he says, um, energetic and restless in the day's bright light, I find no more restless rest than in the dimmer starlit light of night. Nay, though the night through the night, the fluid flow of finite forms. ABCs and integers whirl through my halls and doors, float up and down each staircase with grace, and dance like little children across herring-boned ceilings and harlequined granite floors. And then, like wisps of whispers, they point and giggle on tiptoe as they trickle past second story doors. Then the poem goes on to its ending where the, the building says, um, I wake to them in peace and storm. I tell you verily, it is for them I carry on. So that's the hundred years, that's the building's voice, and that's, um, you know, um, speaking about the, the people in the town who come in through the building and do their uh, business of, you know, figures and facts. Okay, absolutely. And yeah. the municipal building of Hartford, I, I am a Hartford resident, and I love that building. It's one of um, oh, yeah, many, many buildings of Hartford that that's on the National Register of Historic Places and is, is just a charming um just a charming piece of architecture. So Dave, let's see, what else can we mine from you? Okay, I'll, I'll read this poem here. Uh, this has a little bit of rhyme in it, and uh, it's somewhat romantic. Oh, all mm -hmm. right, okay. some romance. <clears throat> it takes me back a, a lot of years. Great. It's, it's called Dance With Me. Oh, I love that one. Behold the days of youthful love when flowers were in bloom. Our summertime had just begun. It was the month of June. I met a girl, a lovely lass, with eyes of emerald green. Her hair was red, a fiery red, such hair I'd never seen. She turned her head and smiled at me. I buckled at the knee. <laughs> I looked at her, and then I said, Will you dance with me? 
We stepped out on the dance floor. I held her hand in mine. For a moment, I stood breathless. To me, she was divine. We waltzed around in circles, doing twirls and fancy spins. My heart was beating faster than I began to grin. Her freckled face was beaming. She indeed enjoyed the dance. Mm. The balance of this evening will be left to fate and chance. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a beauty. That's one, that was one of my favorite poems. My wife is my muse, and she, uh, she loved that poem. She, she uh, screens all my work before, <laughs> before, I, before I read it in public. Well, that's right. I was, you know, I was wondering, we, we certainly have the writing group, Facts and Poets group, but, but then individually we may have other people who edit or screen or, or who inspire us, right? Right. So I know your wife, Diane. Oh, yeah, Diane, she does all my, all my uh, screening, yes. That's excellent. Very nice. Pamela, let's turn to the photo that you brought, and, um, and how about if you let us know about or will read to us the poem that was inspired by this photo. Is this a family photo? No. It no, is this something that you found? Something I found, yes. Oh, so it's really found art. And you've written a poet, poem to it. Okay. Poem's title is, Does She See Us? Does she see us all before her, staring, and wonder what distant land and our peculiar garb we've emigrated from? If she could walk off the page, her bouquet in hand, would she remain as poised and charming as her posies? Or would she, in her white laced petticoats and polished, strapped and buckled black shoes, hop out and dance across the floor and round and round the house, room to room? How long before we'd see her wonder, where's mama? And shout for papa with alarm. How many pleas for mama and papa would we endure before we wished her back, before the Hudson River scene? in the Johnstone gray tone photographic portrait on the wall. Thank you. That's so lovely. You know, our time is actually almost up. So what I want to do is just to let people know again that we have our 10th anniversary. We love the Facts and Poetry group. And in fact, in West Hartford, poetry is very important. There's a, there have been over the past couple of years poet laureates of the town and currently Christine Beck is one and she will be joining us on that day April 24th it's a Sunday one o'clock and we hope to see you all there at the Faxon Library 1073 New Britain Ave. Thank you to my guests again this is Art Talks and I'm Joanne Bauer.